guys, welcome back to E3. Today I'm joined by Denby Grace. Nice to meet you. How Good are to you? Meet you? And we're talking Evolve now. The new thing for E3 is the Kraken. Yep. Um, this is the first time we've seen the Kraken. What's the, what can the Kraken do? So yeah, the Kraken's our new monster. And uh, first things first, the Kraken fly. And that's uh, a great, uh, well, it's very, very different to the Goliath. Uh, and what we like to dub, uh, the Kraken deals death from above. Um, a lot of electrically based abilities, such as the lightning strike or a vortex. Um, and yeah, basically the Kraken just plays very so so different to Goliath. Where Goliath was a much more physically based, melee based sort of monster. Uh, the Kraken is actually weaker in terms of like actual strength, but she, it flies. So you you know what I mean? It can have, it's very evasive. Can move very quickly across the map. Can literally sort of like hover around the team. And you have to you have to use different skills and different tactics to kind of get the Kraken out of the sky first of all, and then sort of nullify those attacks. So, yeah, we're really excited to take the reps off it. And uh, yeah, we, we we're seeing people employ some very very different strategies to sort of deal with the Kraken. It's, it's really interesting how you were describing the area of effect attacks that the Kraken yeah. has, and how you've got to make sure you're spaced out when you're facing yeah. the Kraken. And then with other monsters like Goliath, maybe sticking together is more of an option. So I guess what, you, are you trying to go for a thing where you have to constantly be adapting your strategy based on what monster you're fighting, and when you're all the monster, you too have to be adapting your strategy based yeah. on the strengths and weaknesses of your monster? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we've announced the, the, the Goliath now and the Kraken, there's still a third monster to announce before launch. With are all vastly different, and I think one of the big attractions of Evolve is every character in the game, the monster or hunter, there's something for everyone. And they all play, a, they all play the monsters especially, they all play vastly different. The roles, uh, the, char the hunter characters, their roles are, uh, if you're an assault, you're the damage dealer, if you're the support, you're obviously, you're there to support the team. Uh, medics healing the team and then the, the trapper's there to trap. But each character plays that role differently. You know, one of the things as well that we have at E3 is our new, our new four hunters that we've unveiled and, and, and they play pretty differently to the last four, you know. Our medic is is very different. Our medic before has an active healing ability. She, she actually uses this heal beam on, pe on people to heal them during the game. Lazarus doesn't actually have any active healing ability. He comes into play once your character's dead. <laughs> and he comes into the battlefield and actually resurrects you. So it's a very different sort of strategic way you've got to think about that, you know. you As a team, you're going to die a lot more. But you've got to rely on the fact that Lazarus is when you're dead, he's very, very effective. And a, and a monster has to strategically think about that. He's like, Lazarus becomes the most important player on the battlefield at that point, and you're going to want to target him. He also has a cloak, so you're not going to see him a lot. Yeah. So a really good Lazarus player can really turn the tide, but then a, mo a really effective monster player knows this. And then the whole sort of kicker on top it is everyone's human. <laughs> so there's no AI there. There's no, like... Like a, when you're classic boss fight in the game, you like learn the cycles of the abilities and then learn when's your turn to attack. No, there's none of that here, right? The most unpredictable thing is is the human opponent that you're playing against, and that's a really cool thing about Evolve. And for some of the guys who've maybe not uh, seen too much of Evolve yet, can you talk us through the Evolve mechanic? Because I remember when I first played the game and I was the monster, I was like, oh, I'm just going to kick everyone's ass. Yeah. Ran straight in there, hadn't eaten anything, hadn't evolved, and I got absolutely annihilated straight away. So when you're playing as the monster, it's not just a case of being awesomely powerful straight away. Can you just talk us through yeah. what that process is like? So we've, we've actually changed the things a little bit since you played so you do actually have the opportunity to be awesomely powerful straight from the off because it's something we felt we missed a little bit our good really good players can still win at stage one so we changed the way the ability system works in, in uh, for the monster now you have much like a MOBA you have three skill points to choose from so you have four and you have four power uh, abilities to sort of invest that in uh, and you can choose to invest all your skill abilities in just one ability and actually get a stage three ability at that stage so you can have one ability that's really really powerful right from the off it has a long cooldown uh, which leaves you vulnerable well leaves you with unable to use anything but your melee attack during that cooldown or you can choose to go a bit more even spread and actually um, invest say one skill point in each of each, uh, three different abilities Again, it allows you to chain abilities together more quickly, but they're much, much weaker, but you're not dealing with that cooldown. So you can keep the you can keep the hunters on the back foot. So that's the first thing to say is you, you have the opportunity to be a powerful monster. Now, how you evolve in the game is actually you feed on the wildlife. You get in the world and then you're you're looking for wildlife to feed on. 
Early on, you're looking for smaller stuff because you're not so big, and the wildlife itself is pretty dangerous. Uh, so you're feeding on the wildlife and you're filling up your evolve meter. When you when your meter's full, then you choose to evolve, and we give you three more skill points to spend. So then you invest those skill points. By the time you hit stage three, at that point you've got you've had nine skill points. You're 30 foot tall. Yeah. You are clearly no longer the hunted. You are the hunter, and and the ebb and flow and the, the, the sort of the dynamic of the game just sort of shifts. But that's not to say we have we have guys who are very effective at winning as a stage one. And again, the hunters. They kind of get complacent. They think, ah, let's go and find him. And he's like sat there at the start going, hello, fellas. <laughs> Literally stand there and eat. And it's a good strategy as well. He's take down two of them right at the start. Puts them so on the back foot. Buys you so much time to go off and do your thing. So there's different, uh, there's, again, massively different strategies that we see even in our, our group of 10 players that we have at our office at 2K. We see loads of stuff like that. And let's flip that around then. So you're the monster. You've managed to evolve to stage three. You're pretty badass by that yeah. stage. What can the hunters do against a stage three monster? I guess you've got the you can win as a stage one monster. Can you win as a hunter when the monster is stage three? What can you do in there? It's 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 very much more difficult, which is like why early the game the game is oriented around early on as the hunter, you're like, we have to stop this thing evolving because the moment it's when it's evolved to stage three, our job is gonna be real hard. It's not impossible by any stretch of the imagination, but at that point, you are dealing with a way more powerful monster and you have to be really, really on your game. Our guys, uh, really advanced players can do it. It's fine. You know, but uh, at the same time, against the really good... You had, say, um, let's think about this. If you had a rank 30 uh, monster against a rank 30 hunter team and they'd never encountered the monster, so he's got full health, full armor, I'm probably always going to side with the monster player. It's not impossible. What you find in our game, it's about encounters. And... Uh, before you actually kill the monster, you might have three or four encounters with the monster. Because any damage that you do to that health bar is permanent. Right. So you got a lot of new players when they come into the game, they think, hey look, let's kill the monster, kill the monster, kill the monster. And it's like, no, it's actually okay to flee on both sides. Uh, the monster has his armor, which is rechargeable. So a good tactic to the monster is to flee once you've done the armor, once you've used the armor and actually get away. And a really crafty hunter team will be know this. They'll go in, they'll not trap the monster instantly. They'll save all their trapping stuff because they don't want to use the cooldowns. And then the moment he's looking to flee, that's when they actually, that's when they snap him. And they keep him in there and then they're doing permanent damage. And again, you're not, you've got to not freak out that he's getting away. Yeah, you certainly want to keep on his tail and keep a distance from him to stop him from evolving. But, um, the key is like over the course of two, three encounters. So then what usually happens is a monster gets to stage three, he's coming over, he's got full armor, but he's only got half his health. So again, that's ma majorly evens the battlefield. Also, one of the things you can use is once he's stage three, we he's strong enough to uh, destroy an objective on the map. It's kind of how we, how we force an end game rather than this big cat and mouse that lasts forever. So, um, we have an end game objective, and uh, within the, the map that we're showing today, it's actually not, it's, uh, it's a generator that you have to destroy on a dam. Uh, so what it does is, once you see him go to stage three, a lot of the hunter team, they'll fall in on that position, and they'll fortify that position. So you've got Maggie with harpoon traps, she'll put harpoon traps down, you've got other guys with toxic grenades, sentry guns, and stuff like that. So you'll actually create a defensive position. You'll actually get to an area of the map. Like I, I said, you turn from being the hunters to the being the hunted. So you 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 know this and you, you change the way you kind of strategically prepare. You get into a good spot for you. No longer are you sort of chasing around the map. Uh, so the, again, the game has these, even in this 15 minute period, which is usually like the sweet, 12 to 15 minutes is the sweet spot uh, for a game length, uh, you have this ebb and flow. You have this change of game, which is, again, one of the really interesting things I think about the game. Fantastic. That is Evolve, everyone. It's looking absolutely amazing. Make sure you check it out. If you want to see more videos from E3, we've got absolutely loads going up on our channel this week, so don't forget to subscribe.